Today we're starting our third unit of the semester, which is systems of equations. And so our first target is pretty basic. It's just kind of recognizing what a solution to a system means um, and getting you thinking about what you already know about systems of equations. So a system of linear equations would be two equations that consist of two variables. And to solve, we need to use both equations. So there's two unknowns, x and y. A solution to a system of linear and um, equations is the point of intersection. And this is something that we're going to keep coming back to not only today but throughout the unit. So when we solve a system, even if we're not looking at the graph, which we actually will in target two, but even if we're not looking at the graph, um, we're finding where those two lines may intersect if they do at all. So on this first target, we're just testing whether the point given is actually the point of intersection. So here we're determining is the point 2, 1 the point of intersection of these two lines. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is just plug in our point for x and y. So 2 is x and 1 is y. So I'm going to see if that's a true statement in both these equations. So in the top one, 2 plus 2 times 1, does that equal 4? Is that a true statement? It sure is. So then we test it in the second one. 3 times 2 minus 1, that's 6 minus 1, that is 5. Since 2, 1 makes for a true statement in both of these equations, that means that is the point of intersection that is the solution to the system. So let's take a look over here at B. Our point is negative 3, 5, so remember that's x and y. So 3 times negative 3 minus 7 times 5 equals negative 34. So that would be negative 9 minus 35. That is not a true statement. That does not equal negative 34. So I can stop right there and say, no, this is not a solution um, to this system. And so it has to be true in both statements. As soon as it's false in one of them, even if it's true in one, you go ahead and stop and say, no, that is not a um, solution. So then on target two, what we're going to do is actually look for the point of intersection by graphing. So we still have a system. Notice these problems have two equations, two variables, x and y, and we're going to find that point of intersection in these two lines. So taking a look at this first one, the first line y equals negative x plus 3. So that means that the y-intercept is at 3. So this is already in um, slope-intercept form, which is nice and the slope is a negative 1. Whenever I solve um, a system using graphing like we're doing here, you'll notice that I make way more points than I normally do when I'm just graphing a line. Normally I would never make that many points, I would just do like 3 to 5 and connect them. But when you're solving using graphing, your lines have to be super um, exact, which is why I make so many points. All right, so then the second line has a y-intercept of 9 and a slope of 2. So I can't go up 2 over 1, so I'm going to go ahead and go in this direction. And then you'll notice we can see where that point of intersection is really clearly. It's the point that they share. And so the point of intersection there is negative 2, 5. So we can go ahead and write our solution down here. You could check your work going back to kind of the ideas behind target one. You could check your work by plugging in negative 2 for x and 5 for y in both those equations, and it should be a true statement for both of those. All right, moving on to b, that top equation has a y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of 3. So up 3 over 1, make sure your line is going uphill. And again, you'll notice I'm making a lot more points than I usually do. All right. There's my first line. Then the second line has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 1 half. And so again, we can really clearly see that point of intersection. If you're ever graphing these and you can't clearly see that point of intersection, there's probably a mistake in your work somewhere. Um, they should always cross at these whole pretty numbers. So if you're like, I think it crosses at 2.5, it's probably not the case. You might want to check your lines. 
So that point of intersection is 2, 3, which is why I wrote the solution as 2, 3. And again, we could check our work by plugging our x and y value back into both those equations. All right, so let's take a look at C. Our first equation is y equals negative 4. So that should be something you recognize as a horizontal line at negative 4. Let me make that a little bit more exact. So it's just right across here. If I wanted to make points there, I could, but I know it's just a horizontal line at negative 4. Then for our second um, equation, it's not in slope-intercept form, so we have to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. So the slope-intercept form would be y equals negative 2x minus 2. So I'm going to graph that. So y-intercept of negative 2, slope of negative 2, so going down 2 over 1. And I can see where that crosses the horizontal line at 1, negative 4. And then for our last one, our top equation is in slope-intercept form already. So 1 half x minus 3, we're going to start at negative 3 with a slope of 1 half. Make sure you're going uphill on this one. You'll notice sometimes my line gets a little wonky, but having those points really helps to make sure that my answer will be exact. Then I'm going to take this equation up here because I have to put it in slope-intercept form. I have to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract x. So I have negative 2y equals negative x plus 6, and then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So I get y equals, and this would be a negative 1x divided by negative 2, which would be a positive 1 half x. So negative divided by a negative is a positive, and that would be minus 3. So then I have y-intercept of negative 3 and a slope of positive 1 half. And if you'll notice, this graph actually lands right on my previous graph. So when we talk about points of intersection, all of their points are points of intersection. So this is a case of infinite solutions. Anything along that line would be a solution. We do have another case, which I'm just going to show you down here, is if you were to graph and you had parallel lines, and so this is just a sketch of a graph. So let's say that's one of your lines, that's another one of your lines, and those are parallel. They never intersect. This would be a no solution situation. We're going to learn how to um, solve in a couple different ways in the coming days, but this is the first way that we can solve a system is by graphing. You just have to make sure that your equation is in slope-intercept form before you graph.